Um, so welcome again. This is our April garden talk. Lori Gaddy will be talking about starting a compost pile. Hi, I'm Lori Gaddy, and I'm a Genesee County Master Gardener. I took the Master Gardener course in 2014. I took a Vermont Master Composting course in 2018. However, I am not a Vermont Master Composter or a New York State Master Composter. I'm just going to share some of the stuff that I learned. Compost has started many years ago. They really don't know when it started. They've been adding materials to the, or to the soil for as much as 10,000 years. During the time of the Roman Empire, Marcus Porto Cato, a retired general, wrote in a book titled, Concerning the Culture of the Fields. There is evidence that there was composting done in Scotland in the Stone Age. In the early 1943, Sir, Howard, Sir Robert Harlard wrote using compost instead of chemicals. And in Rydell, R.J. Rydell introduced organic farming to the Americans in, in the mid-1900s. Through Rydell, through experimentations of his work, he became the driving force of composting today. Nature composts all the time without any human interaction. This is called decomposition. Composting is recycling waste back to nature. Compost, composting is recycling waste back to nature by humans managing the decomposition process. So there's two kinds of decomposition. There's aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic is natural. It's like the forest, like the forest bottom um, floor. Um, it has spaces and oxygen for, for microorganisms to break things down. Anaerobic is landfills. There's no oxygen. Everything is really com compact. I read that they found a 20-year-old newspaper in a landfill one time, and they'll still be able to read it. Right. Soil is made out of many layers. And you find nutrition up here in the top soil, and the very, very top is humus. That is where most of the nutrition is from the soil. That is what compost, that's what we're making is humus. I mean, we want to mix it in with your top soil. Um, it, it takes the earth 500 years to make one inch of topsoil and 3,000 years to make it fertile. Soil is a non renewable resource. Compost is organic matter which we can add to help our plants grow. According to Sue Reed, a practical guide of Climate wise landscaping, he said, we need to treat our, so we have to stop treating our soil like dirt. <laughs> Can't get it, go to the next page. Do you want to go to the next page? Um, put your pointer down on the slide and see if you did the episode. Sometimes it gets locked up. Nope. Here, let's see. Oh, okay. What's going on here? There. Let's just do that. Okay. I don't know why it does that, but okay. There are many reasons for us to compost. It actually reduces carbon emissions and methane emissions. It actually draws them into the compost and breaks them down. Mm. It will save on, on traveling to purchase your soil, your potting soil, your fertilizer, et cetera. 
and even your mulch. And when you compost your, your food scraps, that's all the less you have to pay for to be taken away in the garbage. It makes a great mulch. Your food will taste better and it'll improve your health. It suppresses plant diseases and the pests in your gardens. And you think about it, healthier plants make healthier people. But before yourself, before you start, there's a few questions you have to ask yourself. How much compost are you gonna actually produce? So how big of a pile are you gonna try to have? Like a garden, I would say, start on the small side and work your way up. What is more important, the attraction of your compost or the convenience of being able to use it? And will you be able to remove your compost and use it conveniently? Being a gardener, you probably already have all the tools you need to compost. You have your gloves to protect your hands from blisters and injuries, the shovel to dig. I wanted to mention that you it is um, okay to touch your compost without gloves. Homemade compost is fine to, to handle. Everybody has a wheelbarrow or a cart, the hose to keep our compost moist. We need a fork or some kind of a turner. It's nice to have a sifter for when your compost is done, you can sift it down to a finer consistency. A garden edger is really nice for when you are adding your compost. If you have pieces that are too big, you can use that to chop up your pieces. A wood chipper and a, wood, and a mulch mower and Another thing nice to have is a food processor just for compost and a paper shredder. Because paper always goes a long way. You wanna buy the best tools you can afford. By taking care of your tools, they will last years. Tools that have been handed down from generation to generation are fine as long as they've been taken care of. I had a shovel that belonged to my grandfather. We don't know where he got it from, but one day it bent as I put it into the ground. So tools do wear out after a while. <laughs> there are some factors for composting. There are many things that affect it. The type of bin you are using, what you are actually composting. Are you composting stuff that's gonna break down quickly or take a long time? How much moisture is in your pile? Is there enough oxygen for your microorganisms? And the temperature, the hotter the pile, the quicker it breaks down. We did it again. I can't get it to move, Jim. Did you get it? I think every time I don't know what it's going to be. You have to like put your pointer on your PowerPoint and hit enter. Oh, okay. And then uh, that should bring up the keys over here. So you got Oh, I see. Yeah. Whoops. Yep. Let's go once the wrong way. way. Yeah, oh, I don't okay. know why it's doing that. All right, now I see where it goes. Usually I'll go. There are steps for composting. They're very simple. You decide what kind of composting you want to do. You find your perfect location, you gather your materials, and then you start. Sounds really easy. Composting is sort of like making an apple pie. You gather your ingredients, chop your apples up smaller, and all your ingredients smaller. You mix them all together, all according to your favorite recipe.
you want to plan your location carefully. Does the area get at least partial sun? Can air get around it? Your compost will leak. So you want it on the ground so it will leak into the ground. It should be easy to get to and away from wooden structure because the wood would rot if you're against the wooden structure. <clears throat> Here's a multi-bin system. There are several ways you can work with the multi-bin. One way is you can add compost, you can add your composting pile into the first bin. Then a little while later, turn it into the second bin and fill up the first bin again with compost to be to break down. Then a little while later, take the stuff out of your second bin, put it in your third bin. By this time, it should finish be finishing up pretty much composting. Put the stuff in your first bin into your second bin and have it continue and start over again with your first bin. Another way would be just pile your compost in the first bin and let it set over the year and it will eventually break down. However, it's not really good for the compost to break down without being mixed. Chance of rain increases seventy percent chance of morning showers after the thunderstorms and on Saturday. Look at that drop in temperature. Uh, tumbler method. Here's a nice tumbler. It's right outside the back door. Very convenient, especially in the winter. If you have the tumbler, you have to tumble at least every couple of days. You add your kitchen scraps. Add some brown, which is usually a uh, paper. And when it's full, you stop adding and you keep tumbling it. And within three, four weeks, you should be able to uh, get some compost as long as it's warm out. You're not gonna get much in the winter. And there's the barrel, which is very popular. You have a container such as a garbage can. You drill holes in the bottom of it and up about one foot up the side. You place the garbage can into a hole to bury all, all the holes up about up to the side. You anchor it. <clears throat> you add brown, you add um, straw or sticks to the bottom for drainage. And then you layer your compost materials. And when like you add food, add some browns to it, mix it up some, and eventually it will be all done and you can use it in your garden. <clears throat> a wire bin, you make a wire bin circle out of poultry wire, the gavadized one. Or you can use a vinyl coat wire that's about a quarter inch uh, square or half inch square, and or snow fence even. You um, make the circle and you um, you can reinforce it with a pole or attach it to a fence or something. And the layered materials, they will, should recompose. When it comes time to turn it, you remove the wire, set the wire up right next to where that pile is and move the pile up back into your wire, wire bin. When it's heavy to, ready to harvest, you just untie the wire and harvest your compost. French composting is really interesting. This, um, you can just make a trench anywhere. It's to be about 18 inches deep. Place your food scraps in it and put about 12 inches of soil over top of the food steps, and it will break down in about two, three months. Here, somebody's trench in their garden. You start a compost trench next to your plants, and you uh, work that up this summer. And then next year, you plant where you trench, trench the year before. The heap 
is a way to compost. Basically, you build your pile. It's three foot by three foot, three foot high, three foot wide. And it will, and you mix it every once in a while, it'll be ready in like a year. If you decide to really turn it a lot, it will be ready sooner. Sometimes people will just keep adding more to the top of the pile and just harvest off the bottom. There's several other ways you can do a harvest. Do it. It's like really a basic goal. <laughs> Let me get rid of this. Here's some essential ingredients. Basically, it's two part browns, one part green, some water, and some air. I have my buckets over to the side there to give you an idea. The gray in your head, two browns and a green. Here are some browns. The brown suit sometimes can be hard to find, so you can always fall back on shredded paper. If you use envelopes, you shred envelopes, make sure you don't use the plastic coating on them where the address part, and uh, don't use any of the shiny sheets of paper. They come in the mail or in your newspaper. Do greens, those are your proteins for your organisms. They're your kitchen straps. Be sure nothing is cooked in oil or meat or add meat. If grass has been treated with a herbicide, a weed killer, or has gone to seed, do not use that in your compost either. The seeds will not, um, will not die and then you'll be spreading seeds wherever you spread your compost. Here's a list of organic supplements that will be nice to add to your compost, but they're really not necessary to add. There are three numbers on the bag that tells you how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is in, the, in each of the uh, fertilizers and stuff like that. And then, uh, I'm sorry, these nutrients, nutrients of the three numbers in the bag are always in the same order, N, P, and K. Nitrogen gives the plants the green, it's a further green cut leaves. It gives it energy. Phosphorus helps the root system get real strong. And potassium is for overall health of the plant. To remember what these numbers mean, you just think of up, down, all around. Do you want your compost to be about as wet as a wrung out sponge. And you need to turn it for air. Ron Reichel organisms are living in there and they need air to breathe. <clears throat> Never use pet waste. For pet, our, our animals that eat meat contain pathogens that are, and diseases that are harmful to humans. Grease, bones, and dairy will attract mice and other unwanted guests. Weeds have gone to seed. You'll be just spreading the weeds throughout your garden. Compost doesn't get hot enough to kill the seeds or pathogens, so you don't want to add diseased plant material. 
your plastic, metal, and glass just does not compost. So you'll be taking that out at the end. And wood ashes has too much lime in it. So if you do use it, be very careful and not to use too much. There's several ways you can use your compost. As a top dressing, you can spread a thin layer in your lawn to improve your, improve your soil in general. If you wanna use it as a potty mix, make sure you blend the textured compost and the potty mixture. No more than one half of the potty mix should be compost. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna pick our bin or our compost way we're gonna be. We're gonna put it where we want it in a place where we're gonna be able to use it. Collect our greens and browns. We're gonna layer our greens and browns. We're gonna add a shovel full of soil. You turn, turn it. When it's done, you use. Here's my quick recipe for composting. And Sorry, it's one up. question on your um, recipe. I think, why are you adding a shovel full of soil? Soil does have the microorganisms in there already that the compost is, if you don't add soil, compost will get the microorganisms in there. But by adding soil, it just gives your compost a little bit of a head start. All right. Um, do you have more slides or was that? That's all I have. Okay. All right, hey, folks. So if anybody on Zoom has a question, feel free to unmute. We're gonna start here with, any questions that are um, in the building that are live? Can we have a question for Lori? Yes. When is the best time to add compost? You probably any time best or fall? Best time to add compost? You can add compost anytime. Anytime. Yeah. No best time. No best time. Mm -hmm. Yes. The one where you buried the barrel. Okay. Yeah. How far down do you need? Do you really need to? Oh. How far down to put, place the barrel in the ground? Um, at least as deep as the holes that you put on the side of the barrel. Okay. The, the holes have to be underground also. Yes. Um, I know that composting gets a, a bad rap. When people put uh, their garbage and their, their trash in the, the compost. And my suggestion would be to uh, Go out with your shovel and dig a hole into the compost you've already started and bury it because you're going to get rats and mice and woodchucks and everything mm -hmm. else coming because it's a good source of food for them. Yes, you want to cover your greens um, with at least with browns or bury it in your pile. I guess I wasn't clear on that. Lori, you got a um, question from the Zoom people, could you please go back to the slide of why to compost? I think oh, sure, no beginning. problem. There we go. Oh, that was fatalist. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Lori? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what do you want? Okay, on one of theirs, what to put in it, you did say animal manure. Do you mean like chicken manure, horse manure? Okay. Yes, any non meeting animal. Got it. Yeah. Have you heard of a, uh, something they call compost tea? I, I can't hear you. Compost tea. Compost tea. Have you heard of that? No. That, that was just mentioned to me recently, and I was curious. If a little bit about that. Compost sheeting, I never heard of it. Yeah, com so, com so compost tea, Irene's asking about that. 
Um, it's usually when you take some of the compost and put it in water and then use the water to water your plants. I think you'd be better off putting the compost on your plants rather than doing that way. I can look into it a little bit more, but I don't remember the ins and outs of the compost tea. I think the comment was one of the ones that was a bit using runoff. And it sounds like that would be too wet for your compost. And your yeah, if you've got runoff from your compost pile or your bin, you probably have too much water in it. People want to water their plants with the compost tea. I've had that come up a couple times. And they think they're making a dilute, and then that, then they water their plants so that I don't know that you know. But they keep some of the I don't I don't really know, but people will always say, "Oh, I made compost tea," and then I water my plants with it. And, and you know, it's one of those things that people swear by. But you know, if you get good results, I guess. Then we, don't, we don't have any signs behind that. I don't know. I, I, I you know, get the look. It, it, it comes up once in a while, like, oh, I always bury a banana by my fist bush, and my grandma always did that, and, you know, it works great. But if it works great, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> you say that, you know? Yeah. Like to mention something about grass clippings. Yeah. You know, you can, you can put a bagger behind your lawnmower. And uh, it makes really good uh, compost. And I, I'd add that uh, the temperature of your bin will go up to 160 degrees. Talk about heat in 24 hours. Um, and you can't underestimate oxygen and air. So the more you mix up your compost pile, the more, the more compost and organic matter you're going to put on your garden. Air. Cool. One comment too, you would want to be sure that your your clippings and your greens aren't treated in any way with uh, pesticides and things like that. Yeah, and you make sure grass isn't treated that you're putting in your compost pile. Yes. Regarding the last statement, the bagger behind the mower, temperature can go up to 160 degrees. What was it previously, and is it into an enclosed compost, like we saw illustrations? Well, you really want compost to be, if you're going to measure it, be about 170 degrees. Oh. So that, that's pretty good, 160. Is that why they're enclosed, to keep the heat in like an oven? I think it's more to keep more compact. To compact it. Yeah. So we should have some what thermometer room we get at gardening supply store. Yeah, you could get one at the garden supply store. Not what, I don't think it's really necessary to know how hot you unless you really want your compost quickly. Is there anything we can do to raise the temperature? It's just Mother Nature. You well, the nitrogen um part, the greens. The greens raise well, temperature. Oh, okay. But you don't want too many greens. You have to have the browns to give the greens muscles work. So it's just basically your mixer. Mix it up. The more you mix it, the hotter it gets sometimes. So it doesn't have to do if it's a hot day or a cold day. Yeah, it does warm it up. But yeah, in the winter, you're not going to get very warm compost. West Mary. Another one is why no more than half pot potting mix with compost. Why? Um, you don't want too much nutrients in with your plants. Too much. Too many nutrients. Oh, and the nutrients are the potting soil. I take it. There's some the potting soil in in the compost. Could you tell us one little humorous story that? made you aware of how to redirect how you're doing composting that was fun for you to learn from. Mm. Um, I had my father read that you can compost meat and oil in trench composting. 
So he tried that. He dug the hole nice and deep and covered it up, just like they said. And the next time he went back to his compost, he was greeted with little creatures that he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have names? No. <laughs> Species names. <laughs> Rats. There were there were there were mice that came around. And then of course with the mice, then we get the snakes. And so the neighbor boys found the snakes. So we had the neighborhood kids. <laughs> <laughs> Another species. Yes. <laughs> yes. Any other questions for, from the Zoom folks? Any other questions? Irene, did you have a question? All right. Um, thanks, Lori. I do want to say to the how your compost gets while you're cooking it. You can get rid of weed seeds and plant pathogens, but then you have to be very diligent and get that compost thermometer and you have to leave it at a certain temperature over a certain period of time. So that's why we generally don't recommend folks to put in weed seeds or disease, diseased plants because most of us aren't that diligent <laughs> with compost. All right, and we've got some upcoming. We do have some upcoming programs. Um, our garden talk in May will be on house plants. June, we're doing a summer palette of native plants for monarch butterflies. And then our gala, be here before you know it, because that's April already. So it's May 20th here at the CC office, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll have a plant sale a basket raffle and our sh shed garage sale did so well last spring we're going to do that again so master gardeners will be donating gently used or slightly used garden tools containers tchotchkes and we'll have a little shed sale out in the parking lot so hopefully you can all make it so Lori, thank you so much i don't see any other questions so hopefully we'll see everybody next month for another garden talk. Okay.